wake up. <laughs> I'm not asleep. You all right? No, I'm not really. Here, sip this. What do you reckon they're going to say? I don't know. But whatever they say won't change anything, will it? So, mm. nothing to worry about. I really don't want to go. No, I know you don't. We'll, uh, we'll go see Mrs. Payton and then we'll come back. We want to have the headmistress on our side, don't we? Don't think she'll make me dob, do you? Make you what? Dob, you know, um, tell you who the father is. I don't know. I don't think so. You will be there, won't you? I'll be there. You alright then? No, not really. She's worried about what people will say. Ah. Uh. I've said it's only words. Words can't hurt, can they? Oh. I could just tear my tongue out. I was so awful to them. What? You were in shock. No, that's no excuse. I mean, this is a tragedy. You learn that your 13-year-old grandchild is pregnant. Well, what were you supposed to say? Oh, that's nice, dear. I mean, you've got every right to be shocked. I'm shocked. I'm not even related to her. It was just so horrible to them, Alma. I was ranting and was raving. I was worrying about what the folks on the council would say. Look, it's good that you're telling me and it's good that you're getting it off your chest, but, well, really... I should be telling Sarah Louise, Gail and Martin. Well, don't you think? Of course you're right. Sorry. Hey, look. I mean, look at it this way. I mean, you're the head of the family. I mean, if you were in Timbuktu or something, you would be the wise woman. You would be the one who'd be expected to be holding everybody together. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's only a tragedy if you make it one, isn't it? Eh? Mm. A new baby, a new life. That's how we've got to think about it. Right. Oh, oh. oh. a great grandmother at my age. A matriarch. Oh, yeah, matriarch. We won't tell anyone, will you? Of course not. Thanks. If and when it gets out, oh, tongues will be wagging. Can you imagine? You yeah. know what folks are like around here. Well, we'll cross that bridge. Yeah. Oh, Alma, thanks so much. Let's hope the family still want a matriarch. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Albatrosses. You what? Albatrosses. I'm surveying the sky for them. Well, that's a relief. I thought for a minute then we was going to start selling them. After that reindeer meat, we'll put egg past you. It's not funny, Ashley. I have a bad feeling about today. And you're worried about albatrosses? Harbingers of doom. Well-known portents of disaster. Only if they fall on your head. Come on. It's not funny. That corpse they've unearthed, and are erroneously, I say, mistakenly laying at our family's door can be the ruin of us. Oh, yeah. Your granddad was a serial killer, so cancel me black pudding. Come on. Folk are more sensible than that. I think so. Well, we'll see. Look, she's on the case. She's taking a flaming time. Will you listen? She's advertising the job today. One machinist, all right? Maybe I should remind her. No, you do your job and let her do hers. And your job, till you're replaced, is on that machine. Oh. Well, as soon as you're feeling so happy, it's your job to tell them. They've got to pull their fingers out to meet Linda's order. Got a Michael Ladd Jordy. Oh, yeah. Right then, what's happening with the site? Ah. Oh. Ah, uh, what? Well, the cops want it shut down. We've got the body now, what's the point? 
How long for? One hour, two hours. <sighs> what rest of the day, Dougie? What? The foreseeable future. For some old stiff? Well, don't they know we've got a job on? I have told them, yeah. Well, what are you going to tell the lads? Nothing. You are. Well, they want paying. Well, unless you've got the money in the bank, they're going to be disappointed, aren't they? Well, how about you sub me then? Well, then I'll have nothing for the supplies, will I? Dougie, if I don't pay them, they'll walk away. Well, that's your problem. I've got enough to worry about. Dougie, they're good lads. If we get rid of them now, they might not ever come back. You're going to have to do something. No, I'm not. You took them on. You sort them out. What's going on? Uh, uh, guys? Uh, gather round. Right. You'll know that we've been lucky enough to secure... I mean, we have, through excellent sales representation, secured the order for Coopers. Now, this is a big break for us, so we're on probation. If it goes well, there'll be more like it. If we mess it up, we'll lose it, and word gets around. So we need you to pull out all the stops on this one for us. Now, I know you can do it, ladies, and there'll be a good bonus at the end of it for you as well. So let's crack on, eh? And remember, if we pull together, then we'll earn together. Well, since you put it like that... Yeah, I mean, I don't mind going that little bit extra for you, love. <laughs> What a mugger. She gets the order and ends up sewing twice as hard to fill it. <laughs> that Baldwin really is getting his money's worth out of her. <laughs> OK. Well, you're not the first young woman to sit there and tell me she's pregnant and I don't suppose you'll be the last. The school will support whatever position you decide to take. So have you talked it over? Yeah, until the cows come on. And have you decided what you're going to do? Sarah Lou will be having the baby. And the father? Well, that's not an issue because, um, well, we don't want him involved. I see. Can I ask, is this a decision you've reached by yourselves, or have you been involved with any other agency? Well, a social worker's been round, and we're in uh, close contact with our doctor. What about you, Sarah Lou? Do you think you'd like to talk to someone? There's an excellent young women's project I could refer you to. Um, well, if we could just keep it to ourselves. All right. If you change your mind, I'll be happy to set it up for you. Right. The practicalities. The first thing is to notify the rest of the staff. Um, is that necessary? Oh, yes. I'd better make you aware of our position, Mr. Platt. We will support Sarah Louise, but we don't condone what's happened. No, no, of course not. Therefore, we'll set out a discreet program for her benefit. We're not sending out a message that encourages others to follow Sarah Lou's example. All teachers will be informed, and they will treat the matter with complete confidentiality then they can deal with any issues that may arise without calling undue attention to them. I'll also appoint a named woman member of staff who will be Sarah Lou's first point of contact. She'll meet you each week and you can discuss any problems with her, all right? What about your form tutor, Mrs. Bonnich? Good. I'll see her later. So, you seem to be saying that... Uh... Sarah can stay at school. Oh, yes, if that's what she wants, for the time being, anyway. Time being? Well, the later stages will be more problematic. We're not equipped to deal with childbirth here. We're a school, not a maternity unit, and that's how I'm going to keep it. So, um, well, what about later on? Sarah Lou could transfer to a special unit that has facilities for her, or... We could continue to oversee her education, set work for her, and she could be tutored at home. Hmm. And when it's all over? She can come back. Now, can I ask if any other children here are aware of the situation? Sarah Lou's friend, Candy Stowe. I see. You realise that there'll be a lot of gossip, don't you? It'll die down eventually, but you'll need to be ready for it. 
Are you? Yeah. Good. Well, that's stage one over. Wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> I think you should return to school as soon as possible, Sarah Louise. There's no point in putting it off. What do you say? Are you not hungry? No, yeah. No, not really. Why? Wow, what's up? Nothing. You sure? Yeah. I'm gonna get a coffee. Do you want one? Give us a chance. I've not finished my lunch yet. All right. Gail not here. Uh, no. Oh dear, I've just been round to the house. She's not there either. Well, hopefully she's heeding my advice. I said to her, I said, Gail, this virus has knocked you for sick. Now, if you take my advice, which I know you normally don't, but in this case, I hope you will, and I hope you'll go and see your general practitioner. <laughs> or you could try that, uh, that echinacea, which boosts the body's immune system, and which I've heard is very, uh, very good. Hey, eh? Echinacea. No, coffee, please. Right, yes, coffee, good. I was quite impressed with that little speech you gave back there. Oh, well, cheers. Apart from the bonus bit. Oh, I thought we'd agreed. We had. It makes my flesh crawl just to hear it said out loud. <laughs> you need incentives? Yeah, an incentive to keep off the dog. Oh, come on, Dad, you've got to move with the times. Modern management is about partnership. The stakeholding workforce. Yeah, I can think of some of our workforce I'd like to put to the stake. <laughs> what you having? Uh, I'll have a pint, please. A pint and a large scotch, please, love. Not for me, Mike. Oh, well, just as well. <laughs> Only I'm just off to make me fortune on a horse. Well, don't let me stop you. Sure thing, this. I'd share it. But my spirit guide might object. I'll catch you later. Take the note, this yeah. Uh, he's been touched by the stars. Well, something's touched it. Keep the change, man. So tell me, do you think this little pep talk of yours worked this morning? Yeah, it seems to have done. They've been hard at it all morning. Even that when? Yeah, no problem. In fact, the only one who's been dragging her heels a bit is, um... Who? Oh. Well, no, it doesn't matter. Linda? Thank goodness that's over. Mrs Bonnet, she's very nice. Mm. Good idea, that, don't you think? Yeah, I thought so, yeah. All right. Come on. Off we go, then. Brass and as tight as the skin on my Cumberland ring. Morning, Mrs. Payne. Four ashes, and have you got this Craggans for a doberman? How are you today? I'm actually very well. That's good. Usual then, is it? Yes, please. Ashley, four slivers of our finest streaky for Mrs. Payne. Now, I wanted to ask you something. Well, was there anything else you wanted first? Um, yes, perhaps um, um, four sausages. And four of our cylindrical delights. Well, I heard... How tells? Um... Oh, um... Go on, then, some corned beef. Just two slices. Ah. Uh, All right. I heard that you're directly descended from Bernard Cartwright, the murderer. No, 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 he weren't a murderer, no, no. We misunderstood, that's all, but no, it's true. I was directly descended from Bernard Cartwright. He was my grandfather. Now, can I get you anything else? Two slices of ham. Booming up. And that the lover's body was never found. Ah, well, before I answer that, is there anything else you want? Um, two um, chops. And how about some of our finest fillet steak for your doberman? Okay, then, that as well. She's more than she spends in a month. 
Gosh. Now then, Mrs. Payne. The mystery of Bernard Cartwright. <gasps> well, I think hardware, lots of pounds, kitchenware, that sort of stuff. What do you think? Hey? Well, honestly, do you think it's a good idea or not? <sighs> Sorry, I've just got a lot of my plate at the moment. Well, I'm going to find out about it. We don't even know what's going on. There's coppers everywhere. Dougie might not even be able to finish it. Well, somebody has to show a bit of enthusiasm. <sighs> Talk. What about? Martin, please. I've been trying to get you all morning. You've not been in. Oh, don't worry, Audrey. We've not been sully in the name of Councillor Audrey Roberts. Would you just stop it, please? I am so sorry, sweetheart. No, I didn't mean any of those things I said. You know that, don't you? Well, you seemed fairly sure of them the other night. Yes, well, I was shocked, OK. Can we make up properly, please? Can I come in? Come on, Mum. They're only words. They don't mean anything, remember? OK. I'll just go and sort out Mrs Woodruff from under the dryer. For two minutes, all right? Well done, Sarah. That was really nice. Talk about how the mounds are children, eh? Right? What do you want for your tea? Steak with all the trimmings, love. Aww. Is that cord for fish fingers? Because that's all I've got. No worries. No worries. I've got a horse sorted. Isn't that right? So you say. You know, I've got a real good feeling about it. Why don't I put a few bob on for you as well? Because I don't want to abuse my mystic powers. Oh. Well, I hope you don't mind if I do. Hey, <laughs> I'll see you later, love. Why are you going? No, you are. ta -da. No, well, it sounds like they wanted to be helpful. Within reason. How do you mean? Well, they made it clear they didn't condone the circumstances. No, well, I don't suppose they do, but, uh, well, these things happen. You just have to get on with life. Oh, no, you've changed your tune. Yes, I'm well aware of that, Martin. <sighs> Look, I know I said some terrible things. <sighs> well, it's probably my age. My brain doesn't seem to take in things like it used to, but... I was wrong, OK? I was very, very wrong, and I'm sorry. Please, I just want you to know that I will always be there for you all. Especially you, my darling. Sarah? Oh, lovely, what's up? Remains. What do you mean? They blank me. <laughs> No-one's ever going to talk to me again. <laughs> What did I say? Nothing. Well, the teachers were OK with her this morning. But the kids were a bit funny. Not nice funny. Sniggering behind her back. Oh, no. Oh, poor little thing. Are you going to sort this out, then, or what, you? I told you, you're hard to replace. Good machinists don't grow on trees. So I've just got to dangle from my branch, then, have I? <laughs> it's good, I like that. I am fed up with it, Mike. Apart from anything else, I've got the girls taking the mickey. Oh, take that notice. They say you've got me out on the road bringing orders in and behind the machine making up the goods. Two people's jobs, Mike. They say you're taking me for a ride. That what they're saying? And I'm nobody's fool. Well, I suggest we show them how serious I am about you. Get the post filled. No, I've told you when I can find someone. So what are you saying? We name the day. Eh? Set the date for the wedding. Show them I've not taken advantage of you. How long will it take to organise? I don't know. It, it depends what you want. No, no. No, it depends what you want. The works. That's fine. So when? Well, really good places get booked up months in advance. Uh, the summer at the earliest. September? Great. And I can leave it all to you? Of course you can. Oh, great. So there's a lot to do then, is there? Yeah, if you uh, want a really big do. Well, you better get cracking then. Mm. Aye, oh, them albatrosses have a funny way of flying fast. Did you know how today? <laughs> if you'd have told me that the remains of Bernard's little amorous adventure had increased our takings like that. Aye. Mind. Folk have a morbid streak in them. 
um, nosy beggars that go up at accidents on motorways and end up driving in the back of an ambulance. So what, what are you having? I think a treat's in order. I'll have a fan, please. Oh, well, fair enough. No point in taking advantage. I never promise you a winner. Eh? Oh, yeah, 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 I know. Fair enough. Typical, though, innit, eh? It's when you think life's giving you a four-leaf clover, it turns out to be another weed. So it's fish fingers, then? I'm afraid so, my love. Mind you, there isn't anything wrong with that. This woman can do things with fish fingers that'd make your eyes water. I don't doubt it. Oh, trust you, Les. How much more money have you lost? Hey, you know Gina's forecast? Yeah, fish fingers in the 7.30. I don't, what was it? Grey with a one and a four in there somewhere? Yeah, why? Look, winner of your race, ridden by Seamus Grey at four to one. There you are, see? See? The spirits are talking to me. I just haven't figured out what they're trying to flame in say yet. Gina! I could do with the spirit talking to me, if you don't mind. Sorry, Fred, what'll it be? Scotch and threat? And a pie for our Ashley. Um, how about you, Roy? Uh, no, thank you. This orange juice will do me nicely. Douglas? Fine, thanks, Fred. Yeah, I don't know. You have an upturn in trade, you try to celebrate it, and you have to do it on your tod. Hey! Mine's a pint. Wait till your horse comes in. Business good, then, is it? Not too bad, young man. I thought you were worried about remains of that body. Worried? Thanks for that bother. We've done more business today than we do in a week. No. Sounds like an opportunity to put folk right. Oh, aye. He's only had his meat cleaver out demonstrating how my great-grandfather burned and disposed his victims. Doesn't sound much like supporting family honour. And this quid's in it. You must be joking. Uh, oh, talk of the devil. I've been chasing you all day. So, so have heard. So, can we get started? I'm afraid not, Mr. Ferguson. The illegitimate oh. son of Queen Victoria's eldest son. What's he on about? Oh, the body on the side. Victim of his granddad, apparently. And is his grandfather still with us? I shouldn't think so, would you? Hardly likely. So I think we can let him off the hook. What do you mean? We had the results of the post-mortem. The person that was found on your side was a male. Died within the last 12 months from head injuries. He... He were murdered? I'll be in touch. And he added the third.